Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in all prayer and and by what we have left from you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, Mercy, holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Mercy, holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Mercy, the Lord be with you. And with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. All the truth tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and fire causes water to boil. To make your name known to all your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that you did not expect, you made down. The mountains quake in your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, who are angry and we sin. Because you hid yourself, we friends rest. We are all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like the filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. You have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the land of our iniquities. Yes, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember anything forever. Now consider, we are all your people. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read with me again in unison portions of Psalm 8. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading the hills of light of God. Shine on the Lord, you that are in the promise of the Lord, in the presence of everyone who has been given to the Master. Stir up your strength and your followers. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your confidence and you shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angered? Despite the prayers of your people, you have set them to the bread of tears. You have given them all those tears to drink. You have made us the meridian of our enemies, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the rain of your right hand. The Son of Man who has made so strong for his And so we will never have to pray for you. Give us life that we may fall by your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your confidence and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you will call him the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and it puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. things we've missed this year because of COVID was being able to uh, sashay over to Mobile and um, do a little walkabout Battleship Memorial Park where the Battleship Alabama is parked. Um, it, it's a nice park and you know the Battleship it's kind of nice to you just sort of step back in time. Uh, they've done such a nice job with that facility that you really can take yourself back into the the 1940s and maybe imagine that ship on the water and it manages to be at one and the same time this big old metallic hunk of lethality uh, but also very graceful and elegant its lines are just beautiful <coughs> there's a submarine there too called the drum uh, submarines tended to be named after fish at that period of time uh, and when it got there, it was in really, really poor shape. And they had it sort of docked behind, at its stern of the Alabama. Uh, and then Katrina hit. And just made a mess out of that place. It turned the submarine over and it, I mean, even the battleship was angled at like five degrees, and, uh, which made it interesting to walk around on. But, after that, what they did, they took the submarine out of the water and put it in this big concrete crate. And to get into it now, you have to walk up all these steps to get up on the deck and then you go back down inside. It, it really was, you know, they had wear and tear on them. And the ship or the submarine was not in very good shape, but there has been 
<clears throat> this one guy who over the years has been restoring this submarine, more or less by himself. Occasionally he has some part-time help. Uh, I mean, it's been decades that he has been working on this thing and he has got it looking so beautiful. He's restored it with original equipment. I mean, it just looks fantastic. Um, you know, we, there are so many examples around of how one person can create so much destruction. And it's nice to run into one person who can create so much wonder and so much beauty with what they do. As I recall the guy as a submariner himself, and he, of course, he's, if he can catch him at a time when he's not, you know, on an acetylene torch somewhere, and he'll talk to you for a while, he loves to tell stories about that submarine. And one of the things he likes to be sure that everybody knows is how easy it was to sink one of those things by accident from the inside just by not knowing exactly what you were doing. And that's when a new submarine crew came on board. The first thing the old salts would tell them is just don't touch anything until we have a chance to indoctrinate you into what needs to be done. Turns out the, uh, the most dangerous thing on that submarine was the officer's toilet because it emptied into the sea. And in order to work it, you had to do eight valves, a sequence of eight valves in just the right order. And if you didn't, then the water would come in from below the sea and the pressure would be such that you couldn't shut it off. The submarine fill up with water and the whole the whole enterprise would go straight to the bottom just by not knowing how to flush the toilet. And that's why those old salts would say to the new don't touch anything until you know what you're doing. And that mantra just kept going just, be alert, be alert. Keep away. Watch what you're doing. Don't get lazy. Keep away. And that's what Jesus wanted his followers to do, was to keep away. To keep away for the inbreaking of God into the world. To undo uh, the eating of the fruit of the tree and the knowledge of good and evil to bring fullness of life, to draw all things together uh, so that God is the one who reigns. He just wanted to keep an eye out, keep away, keep alert. And he emphasized that so much because as he says, you never know when that's gonna happen. Jesus might make incursions into our lives in the middle of the night, over morning coffee, in math class, while we're working on a computer, while we're taking a walk, we just never know when it's going to be. And so Jesus wanted his followers to be alert, to watch, to keep away, like the guy in the parable, the doorkeeper. You know, be like the doorkeeper so that when the master returns, you will be there to open the door and let him in. Because if you miss that, who knows what the consequences may be. That doesn't mean your life is going to go straight to the bottom, but there could be some issues. You know, the purpose of Advent is for us to be alert to the incursions of God in our lives and to be prepared enough to be receptive and responsive to those incursions that God makes. Advent's about ready. I mean, there are so many levels to Advent, but it's about getting ourselves ready so that Jesus can enter into the very fabric of our lives, however it is that that happens. Now, 
that birth is what we celebrate at Christmas, that it happens, can happen any time. Jesus shall reign. And that preparedness for that inbreaking of God, for those incursions of God, is not something that just happens. It really is a matter of intentional awareness, of patient looking. You know, what, what do you suppose would happen within us if we were as alert to the signs of the presence of Jesus at work in our lives as those submariners were to the work that they did and to the craft that they inhabited? I mean, are we even half so sensitive to the work of the Spirit? You know, this has been a very, very strange year. And there have been a lot of things pulling on us, and I wonder, you know, are we, are we, as we get into Advent, being mindful to quiet down a little bit and to pray and to really turn our attention to those things that are immutable, that don't go away with the slightest wind, but stay the presence of God. Are you ready to receive Jesus? Will he find you alert? Will you, with those incursions of God into your life, will you be there to open the door of your heart and your life to let him in? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy family in that solid church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Lord Jesus Christ, as we await your coming, we pray for your kingdom on earth. We pray for your church, that it is led by the Holy Spirit to be Christ in the world. We pray especially for our leaders, Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our own bishop, Paul, our rector, for the Society of St. John the Evangelist, and all who are in religious orders, and for all who serve in your church. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the world, our nation, and community, that your light may penetrate the darkness and show the path to peace and oneness with you. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our parish congregation that in these uncertain times, we recognize our need and longing for you and respond as Mary did to God's invitation and promise. We are thankful for those among us who celebrate their birthdays this week. Travis Laguire, Howard Nichols, Sue Nichols, Meg Travis, Chris Tucker, Cece Gagne, and Hayes Jamerson. We pray that your richest blessings be upon each of you for the year ahead. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those close to us who are ill, hurting, or who stumble, that your mercy will comfort and heal. We pray for Rick, John, Ron, and Dean, Jody, Agnes, Gurley, Carla, Thurl. Helen, Grace, Anita, Don, and Hale. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for your mercy for those unknown to us who suffer from poverty, isolation, or oppression, and that we may be Christ to them in our actions and prayers. Lord, in your mercy, we remember and pray for those who have died, that they may live forever in your eternal life. We remember Frank, Faith, Doris, John, Catherine, Murty, Patricia, and Wade. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, into our broken world. Fill our hearts with your joy and peace and make us bearers of your message of redemption and new life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning, and it's so good to see you this rainy morning. Uh, today is Advent 1. <coughs> it's the beginning of a new church year, and we start off on that journey together. If you are following those things, we are moving now into Eucharistic Lectionary B, and if you're doing the daily office, we're in daily office year one. Uh, 
I think the drill for today is the same as always. You know, we'll have the uh, <coughs> bread down there on the table. If you'll remember to take your service sheet and the little cup that the wafer's in, uh, take that home with you. The Alms Mason is back at the back as it has been for a while. And there will come a time when we'll be able to pass it around and have wine out of the chalice and do all those things that we are used to. Uh, next Sunday, Advent 2 is our annual parish meeting. It will be held at noon uh, next Sunday, and you can participate in two ways. You can be here in person, and we can probably see the, I think without going over the, you know, the distancing limits, we can probably see about 25, 26 people in here. So if you would like to come and be here in person, you are more than welcome to do so. We would simply ask that you call the church office and let us know that you're coming. Okay, and if you don't get an answer on the phone, just leave a message. Uh, we want to be sure we don't go over the number of people that you can take, but we can do that. Or you may participate via Zoom. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Zoom invite has already been sent. Did you get it? If it hasn't, if it hasn't it's coming to you very shortly, but I think it's already been sent. Okay. Um, and so, Please feel free to join us at noon on Zoom as well. Uh, the meeting will be a little bit different. You know, normally we have lots of folks get up and talk about their different ministries, and we just sort of mechanically can't do that uh, this time around. But all the stuff that you need for the parish meeting, the booklet and all that, will be coming to you via email before we get to next Sunday. Uh, so do join us. We, we will definitely elect a replacement in this one. Uh, there's a sign-up board out in the narthex for Christmas flowers, if you would like to participate in that. It always dresses up the place so beautifully. Uh, and our Christmas services, what we have planned right now is two services on Christmas Eve at 4 and at 6. We would ask you, again, because it's such popular service, and, you know, we kind of have a limit on what we can do. Uh, if you will please call the church office ahead of time, let us know that you are coming. And we already have quite a few people signed up for four o'clock. We don't have anybody for six. Uh, if nobody signs up, we'll just can't, as we get closer, we'll just cancel the service. The four o'clock service in person and on Zoom. You will also you'll get an invitation. We'll be able to join in on Zoom on Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Day, uh, we'll have a service at 10 a.m. And it will only be on Zoom. I think Lily and I will probably be the only people here. Uh, and it will be on Zoom so you can join us at home on Christmas Day if you would like to do so. And all of that, of course, is sort of contingent on what the coronavirus does. The numbers are going in the wrong direction all over the place, including here. Our percentage is way up, like 15% positivity on the tests, and that's all for time. Uh, <clears throat> The governor has taken us back to a modified phase two. We're not anticipating that that is going to affect what we're doing here. But again, as we just go for the next couple of months, we're just gonna be taking this one day at a time. Um, I would just say, you know, let's just do all the stuff that they told us to work. You know, I know the masks are uncomfortable. And if you wear glasses, it keeps you in a fog all the whole time can't see through your glasses. Um, but it is, you know, they're kind of a nice way of, of showing compassion, a simple way that you can show compassion for your fellow human beings. It's, you know, if I'm looking at you and I'm wearing a mask, I'm saying, you know what, you're important enough to me that I want to see you here next Thanksgiving. So it's a way we can help keep other, each other well. The distancing, all the things that, that folks have been talking just take care of ourselves, watch out for one another, and hopefully then we will get through this season without having to alter anything as we go along. And finally, I just want to say hello to all the people that have joined us on Zoom this morning. Thank you for being with us. Are there any other announcements for the Living Holy Spirit? Once again, it's great to see you here today. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, offering a sacrifice to God. Thank uh...
physically stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and the great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and the earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and to death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink, this all. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you drink, it do this for the remembrance of men. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctified by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and the blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your sins into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people. Pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sympathy of God. 
Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming and power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer and his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.